welcome to Expound, our verse-by-verse study of God's Word. Our goal is to expand your knowledge of the truth of God by explaining the Word of God in a way that is interactive, enjoyable, and congregational. We all want to be good people, good parents, good friends, good husbands and wives, good citizens. But what does it really mean to be good? And how do we get there? All right, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, this is Dr. White, and we you are tuning in to a deeper dive uh, by weekly Bible study. So we are grateful that you uh, have chosen to be with us on today. If you'll be so kind to go ahead, as the tag is saying, to tag, like, share, uh, definitely comment so that we can uh, have some interaction. And the more we interact uh, and ask questions, make statements, and and uh, the more we interact, the more uh, Facebook and other platforms will open up uh, the algorithms for others to see uh, around the world. So um, we're going to be interactive just like you may be in church. You just got to use your finger. And uh, and if you really, really, really got something to say, no, no, I ain't going to do that. I was going to invite you to come in and scream with me, but we'll do that some other, some other class period. All right. So. Those of you that have been tracking with us for uh, 12 weeks at least, uh, we're at Lesson 12, the la next to the last uh, lesson, as we are studying how to have the good life, how to have a good life uh, here on earth. And so Titus, the book of Titus, that's the theme of the book of Titus, instructing us how to have a good church life, uh, a good home life, a good work life, good community life. Um, so... And it's not living perfect, but there are some principles that we can apply to our lives uh, to, you know, to have a good life. I know everybody should want to want that, right? All right. So this particular chapter in this lesson, chapter three, is the last verses that we're covered in Titus, actually uh, verses uh, 12 through 15. And what's going to happen next week, um, Wednesday again on next week, we normally broadcast on Thursdays, but... Um, I'm going to be away from my birthday next week, so I um, want to uh, share on Wednesday, and uh, I'm trying to see what the next lesson is going to be, even though we end on Titus. Uh, uh, Philemon. Philemon is a one, book, a one book that's right out of Titus that only has one chapter. One chapter. So we're going to Expound that that chapter in a and and crush it down to small pieces real quick on next week and uh, get a takeaway for us how to live a good a good life uh, having a good life. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. If you um, been so kind to go ahead and share already, uh, improving relationships should be something you want, especially with your friends. Man, go ahead and invite your friends because you want your 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 relationship to to be. Uh, uh, be good, be tight, be strong. Uh, your friendships, your partnerships, or whatever have you. And uh, next week, we're going to talk about dealing with uh, difficult relationships. When relationships are difficult. How do you deal with them to make them better? So this is going to help us to improve. All right. So let's go ahead and jump in here. Let me get my other eye, set of eyes here. And uh, we're going to pray right quick so God can intervene and be with us during this study. God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for an opportunity to hear uh, your word. Uh, give us teaching knowledge uh, for your people that we will be able to grow into the theme of the book of Titus that you left for us. Um, that theme is to have a good life. And so God, give us instructions now. And we'll give your name all the praise and glory as you give us strength and the wisdom to apply that which we learn 
in this particular uh, context. Amen. All right. So no matter how much money you have, uh, well, let me speak to somebody. Let me, let me, let me, let me be like my mom taught me good manners. Okay. All right. Who is this? This is uh, all right, Toya. Hey, Toya. A uh, little bit. Good to see you today. And um, who else we got? Is Mother George them on? Oh Lord, I got to call them then. Go find out what's going on. Pam, how you doing? Good to see you. All right. Is that it for so far? Okay. Veronica, good to see you, Miss Veronica. All right. Okay. So that's it. We're going to go ahead and I'll holler at some of you to come in. And I believe that may be Amanda. Uh, so if you have the users showing up, you have to click on a, uh, there should be a link in there to say a stream You have to click on that and give them permission to show us your name. All right, so all right, so no matter how much money you have and uh, how successful you are and how many people know your name, how popular you are, if you don't have good relationships, you cannot experience the good life. It doesn't matter. You can't buy it. You can buy some fake relationships. Uh huh. Yeah, no, we didn't done that, ain't we? We done bought some. But we buy people things, and they, you know, have fake relationships. We do favors for people and have, have uh, good relationships. I'm trying to be nice. Uh, Pastor, never mind, Pastor Feld is a producer, and uh, I, I know him can judge off her if I need to go in the further, because I got I to gotta run in my mouth type of thing, and I run way out. So we do other things, you know, to get relationships, but they can be fake relationships. We just want to improve good relationships. Okay, so I won't go there. Right, not not right now. So um, as we now come to uh, the conclusion of this epistle of Titus, uh, Paul was writing. If those of you hadn't been with us, uh, Paul was writing to this island uh, called Crete, the island of Crete, and it was. It looks like this. It's right off below Greece and Rome in the Mediterranean Sea, and the. Crete had no Christian church, no Christian foundation at all. So Paul sent this guy down to uh, to Crete, the island of Crete, to establish uh, the Christian church, Christendom, the faith, which was fairly new at the time. And Titus was to go there against whatever they was practicing, because they weren't practicing, practicing Christianity. They were practicing a lot of idolatry, a lot of wickedness, all of them to themselves. So now he's crushed the scene with Christianity and beginning to create established churches. And so with that said, they had to uh, establish relationships and improve relationships. And that's why this is a good uh, lesson. Okay. So that is the Georges, and we're, Facebook is doing something weird, Mother George, this is not you, I know you, you get to say, you get all been out of shape that you're doing something wrong, Miss George and Rem George, they're in their late 80s, and they, they doing the darn thing online, but it's not you, it's something Facebook has changed with our programming, and it's just all messed up, even Pastor Felder can't, sure name is not sure enough, and she know all this stuff. So anyway, all right, so we'll move forward. Um, now, the first thing that we need to do that we find uh, five principles for improving our relationship in verses 12 through 15. So the first one that we find in verse 12, uh, well, let me read the whole chapter for you. Oh, man, these names. Okay, now look, I don't speak Greek, but I'm going to try the best I can to uh, get these folk names right. All right, so as soon as says, as soon as I send um, Artemis, send Artemis to Tychius to you, or Tychius to you, do your best to come to, to come to me at uh, Nicopolis. And Nicopolis, 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 I'm sorry, Nicopolis, I'm going to get it right. Because I have decided to winter there, stay there for the winter. Do everything you can to help Zenos the lawyer and Apollos on their way and see that they have 
everything they need. All right. So we're still following, right? This is some stuff we can get out of this conversation. And then verses um, 14 through 15, our people must learn to devote themselves to doing what is good in order that they may provide for daily necessities and not live unproductive lives. Everyone with me sends you greetings. Greet those who love us in the faith. Grace be with you all. All right, so we're going to dissect each one of those verses. Uh, ex that would be part of expository teaching that you go um, line per line, verse by verse. That's what we do. Okay. Uh, I sure have been out of shape. Okay, so. <laughs> all right. So the first thing that we want to be able to do is to be trusting. Be trusting. You improve your relationship by being trusting. All right. I know you know this part, but can some people really lean on us at times? I mean, you know, I'm, okay, I'm talking to Pope. Let me see. We haven't been trusting all our lives. Let me put it like that. Plus, you have, if it's not you, and I know it's hard to admit when we can say I'm not a trusting person. And you may be. So while we're going to look at this principle closer, because you'll always be in the position of teaching somebody else, right? So you may teach your co-worker, you may teach your grandchild or your your children. Um, so uh, I know you can trust me. I've grown to, to that point. But at some point in our lives, of course, we wasn't trustworthy until we got to the point where we have matured. So don't, don't, don't tune me out. Go ahead and take this principle. Let's learn this principle. So that we'll be able to teach this principle uh, to someone else. Uh, maybe somebody younger that hadn't gone through life like we have. Um, so from this passage we can clearly see in verse 12. Uh, let me read that for you. I got one of them names again. When I saw, uh, when I shall send um, Artemis unto thee, this King James Version, um, type Tychicus, or Tychicus, be diligent to come to uh, Nicopolis, for I have determined there to winter. So he's going to be there for winter. Here's the tech catch out of here. Paul is planning to spend the winter there, and it's in the northwestern part of Greece. Uh, he's planning to send... Um, uh, Artemis or either uh, Tychicus to assist or replace Titus. So Titus has been working there for a little while. And so he's sending Titus. Uh, now um, he's giving Titus some relief or either he's um, trying to get out some of these lights off my glasses. Um, so he's sending some relief to Titus or replacing him. Uh, not for a bad thing, but to give him a break. So it's self-explanatory in this, in the sense that um, we know not know nothing of the mention of Artemis uh, in this is the only time that he is mentioned in the New Testament. Um, so this is the only time that he's mentioned. However, he has undoubtedly been a faithful associate to Paul. So Paul trusts him enough, even though we don't read about him. There's a lot of people not read about in the New Testament um, that have been faithful. Um, your name may not be in light. Uh, your name may not be highlighted uh, on the streets, on the billboards, and all that other stuff. Uh, but have you been faithful or trustworthy to uh, a person? And so... Paul uh, trusts him and uh, sends him to the island of Crete. So that's that's the catch we want to take out of that. Now, uh, uh, Tychicus is mentioned about four times in the New Testament, though. So he um, accompanied Paul perhaps on his last part of his third missionary journey. And during the last months of Paul's life, um, 2 Timothy, 
verse four, chapter four, uh, verse twelve, tells us this: that uh, Tychicus, Tychicus, I have sent to Ephesus. So he's already sent uh, Tychicus somewhere before. So he earned his trust um, in Ephesus, and now he sends him to uh, to the island of Crete. Um, so they enlisted others. Most Christians, great leaders, never do all the work themselves. And I have to, I'm one that I have always had to catch myself. I have to be conscious of the fact um, that I'm doing too much um, and pull, pull back and allow others to, to um, do, do those things. Because what, what happens here, if you're doing all, a lot of the work, if you're doing a lot of it as a leader, and um, then in certain areas that other people are gifted at that can do it, um, uh, you can um, put that off to them. Um, and by continuing as leaders or as leader of your home or what have you, delegate something that somebody else is good at doing. And if you can't take your hands off of it, uh, you begin to think that you're the only one, that you're all that in the bag of chips. No one is totally, totally all there in all the bag of chips. We're not... I'm trying not to say that. Okay. Um, I'm trying to remember the quote that your former president said that uh, something about... Uh, oh, man, I can't think of it. I, it'll come to me later. Um... Something about they needed him. We need him. He's the only one that can fix it. fix America. That's what it was. I'm the only one that can fix this. So, um, so we can't be thinking that we're the only one that can do certain things. And what happens with that is that um, you cut others out of their growth, contribution to uh, uh, life, the productive, cutting them from being productive. And what it does to you, it uh, stresses you more. And the more you are doing, the less effective you will be. Let me say that again because that's more extremely important. You might can do this one thing over here. But while you're doing all this other stuff, you're not putting enough energy and synergy into the one thing that you can do. But if you delegate that to someone else... Um, that's gifted at it, then you can focus more on this. All right? Okay. So it makes a little sense why Paul, um, as leaders, never do all the work themselves and enlist those that they can entrust some responsibility. Paul knows to practice this truth in Ecclesiastes 4. Um, it says two people are better than one because they have good reward for their labor. They have a good reward for their, la their label, la labor. Right, Sister Betty? So that's the word. We are Christians, so we're going to trust. Uh, I'm a, I'm, and it may be, be your prayer. It might be in your prayer. God, send me somebody because you reward that. Instead of me doing it all work, if I can get some, one, one other person to help or to uh, do a task, then your blessings is on it because you promised it. That's what you said. That's what the Lord said. Isn't that amazing? Especially when we get, we think that we don't need nobody else. And God is not always blessing uh, our ego. But he blesses us when we bring somebody alongside. All right. And then um, my mom always remind me uh, in her late age of 91. Uh, she's always reminded me of Proverbs 27. Um, she may learn a little bit from me, but I learned a lot from her. But at the same time, uh, she always reminds me that as iron sharpens iron, so man sharpens another. So iron, iron sharpens iron. So you get somebody um, that's gifted to work with you on whatever project or ministry or whatever it is that you may uh, be doing. Uh, this is called synergy. Synergy, and synergy 
uh, means combined power of two or more that can affect more than each working separately. All right, so synergy takes two people. Amen. All right, I wish I knew who that was. But God bless you. Thank you. That is amazing. It is amazing. So, all right, so the second one, let's move on. So to improve your relationship, number one, be trusting. Be trusting. And I just showed you how to do it. Uh, the Lord just showed us how to do it. So now, I already know that, dude, little, little preacher. Uh, I'm trusting. So now you know how to share it with somebody else, though. You know how to share it with a younger, with a grand, or uh, and cause them to be trusting. All right? Um, I'll tell you this story real quick, and we'll move on to the second one. Just this morning, uh, my granddaughter, before she comes over, and I get her dressed and ready for school. So I, Papa always wash, wipe her, wash her face. I make sure her face good because we don't want no, no, no sleep in her eyes and nothing like that. She got to be looking good. So um, this morning, uh, she said, Papa, can I wash my face? Can you? Sh and I said, uh, okay. But the key, some that five-year-old that I was shocked, she said, now tell me how to do it, Papa. So if I had never allow her to even try now she sees that I can trust her uh, and I'm trusting her to wipe her face and she did a pretty good job she was all in her eye and everything like that all the stuff and um, she put Vaseline on it and she did everything that I used to teach her to do um, and so I'm watching her and uh, trusting her to get ready on her own and at five years old, man, I was so proud of her. And I almost teared up when I dropped off Pastor Felder. At the, she just put on a book bag and start marching to the school, to the classroom. And so I was like, man, the baby has grown up. But she's been trusting. And so uh, I have to teach her that because she's a leader in her class. She's the class leader. And so some of the things that we discuss on the way to school is one of those things is now I got to let her trust somebody else because just like her we will act like kids let me tell you one more part of this uh, a few days a few weeks ago uh, she got I pick her up from school she is mad upset and so she's upset and I said what's wrong she says um, Everybody in the class won't listen, I, but they won't. They won't do what I want them to do. <laughs> and so I, she said, I am the leader. So the thing is, she, I told her she has to trust them to do some things and then help them. Now, how many times? Not I know I'm talking to you, but how many times have you known somebody? I put it like that. You know somebody that act like the child because you're doing something at work. And they have a fit some kind of way. Just taking, snatching stuff from you. And <laughs> okay. All right, I'm move on. So somebody say that happened in church too. They won't let me read the announcements at church and uh, <laughs> say my Easter speech and so forth and so on. Okay, well, I'm leaving y'all alone. Mess with y'all. All right, so, um, so number one, be trusting. Number two, be helpful. All right, so being to improve your relationship. Uh, by being helpful, and we find that in verse 13. Let's see. What verse 13? How is that giving us some help here? What's going on? Come on up. All right, there you go. Bring Zenus, the lawyer, and Apollos on their journey uh, diligently. That nothing be wanting on them. Meaning that uh, they don't need for anything. You take y'all take good care of them when they on their journey. Um, so uh, now, uh, Paul asked Titus to do everything he can to help Zenos, the lawyer, and Apollos on their trip there. He asked Titus to see uh, they are given everything they need. That's that verse 13 it said. Take care of them. Be helpful. All right. So we only know Zenos is a lawyer. Since he has a Greek name, he is probably a Roman. So he's probably coming from uh, north. Northeast of Rome. Uh, Apollos is a Jew from Alexandria, Egypt. Uh, perhaps 
I would suggest that uh, he's black, uh, black African from Egypt. And so what does the Acts 1824 tell us about him? That he was a uh, eloquent speaker and had a good knowledge of the scripture. Mm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, see, I'm, I'm just gonna put this in here for free. I just, it's something just hit me that, that, um, it's just a running thing that we, the Africans that came over here, uh, from in slavery, didn't know nothing about the word. They just knew what the white man taught them. Uh, y'all see the scripture right there? Remember his name is Apollo. Apollos came from Alexandria, Egypt, uh, from an African continent. More than likely, Apollos, 99.9% uh, .9 of me believe that he was black. And here it is. He was eloquent in, in eloquent speaker and had good knowledge of the scripture. So don't let everybody tell you that we come here uh, and didn't know scripture. Now, everybody didn't come here not knowing Jesus Christ. Shucks. Jesus Christ was first discovered down there in the Egypt. So that's a whole nother story. We'll get to that later. But stop. We need to let's pull up a little bit on this stuff that we didn't know scripture. Uh, and allow others to say that because we were slaves brought in from Africa like they didn't don't know anything. They knew scripture and probably better than we do. And we have more devices uh, to get more information. All right. So he was helpful. Um, so at first, uh, Paulus' knowledge of the gospel was very limited, knowing only about the baptism of John the Baptist. But when Apollos came to uh, Ephesus, um, Aquila and Priscilla had heard of him. Um, when he got to, right before he got to uh, the island of Crete. Uh, so Aquila and Priscilla heard him teaching. He was limited to the knowledge around just the baptism of John. Now I'm pausing there because I want to make a, a good point. Listen to this. Aquila and Priscilla, two females, heard him took him aside and trained him more fully about the gospel. Let that sit in there for a minute. Two females, two women, Aquila and Priscilla heard the man teaching on the book of uh, teaching about John the Baptist. Say, hey, yo, come here. Uh, you you, you didn't get that quite right. But allow us to train you and help you. So, Apollos is preaching and ministering and two women had to teach him the word. <laughs> yeah, y'all still tracking where I'm going? Yeah, I'm just taking this slow. Uh, so, all this stuff hoopla about females and women shouldn't be allowed to preach. We should be dead now in this day and time. Unfortunately, it's not. Uh, it's still out there. So, a woman should be able, you, men, okay, I'm speaking to men. I guess that's what I need to talk to. But I don't want the women. I, I talk to both. Women, don't be intimidated uh, to be able to share or to teach in any setting. Men, um, men, uh, women have knowledge that we can use. Uh, and so th they actually nurture us as it is. So here it is. Uh, let me give you proof text here from Acts 18, verse 24, because um, we are Bible teachers, Bible teaching ministry. So now uh, I'm going to take you down to verse um, 25. This man had been instructed in the way of the Lord 
and being fervent in spirit, he was speaking and teaching accurately um, the things concerning Jesus. Being acquainted only with the baptism of John, and he began to speak, this is Apollo, boldly in the synagogue, but when Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they took him aside and explained to him the way of God more accurately. That's the word, y'all. That's the history. Acts. And then verse 28 says, And when he wanted to go across, let's drop down here to verse 28. Um, For the powerfully refuted the Jews publicly. So once he got trained, he refuted the Jews publicly, demonstrating by the scripture that Jesus was the Christ. So, if it wasn't for the women that trained him, he wouldn't have been able to preach good. Yeah, I'm trying to help. I'm trying to get this plan. So I want to empower the women tonight and to be able to, to do whatever it is that you do, uh, especially in ministry, uh, even in teaching in, in any workplace or whatever you do. Uh, don't be intimidated by men based on this. The pastor, the teacher, the minister, the preacher was taught by two women. The scripture accurately. I am so happy and proud to uh, say that we I have two, three generation uh, of women in my family. The woman over to my, all the way to the left is my dear, my mother, uh, Reverend Dora Ann White, and in the middle is her was her oldest daughter, the late Reverend Dora Ann. Uh, I mean Doris. Uh, Brooks, that's my sister, oldest sister, my mother's oldest daughter, uh, passed away just a couple months ago. And then the lady over to the right, watch this generation. The third generation is my daughter, uh, the Reverend uh, Natasha Grisham. And so uh, all of them have uh, been influenced in teaching me a lot of things. Um, even uh, even my daughter who's in the mid thirties, uh, so I can learn. I learned from her some things. All right, she's out there. Uh, another generation. She's living a different life. Well, within a generation, she has a different thought process, and so uh, she helps me see the world a little different because I'm getting old and shut up. All right, Miss Pam, what you got to say, girl? Let's see. I always thought Aquila and Priscilla were me, <laughs> were a man and a woman. Okay, all right, good. Thank you for clearing that up. Hey, thank you for sharing that, Pam. Put it back up for a second, please. Thank you for sharing that, and um, because you're not the only one, you're not the only one, and in, in sharing that uh, helps other people to uh, around the world to to understand that. But um. Yeah, those were two two women, and Pam's mother uh, was a minister, and my mother again. And Pam's mother went to the same uh, church ministry, and by the time when they came in the early eighties, um, in the early eighties, late seventies, early eighties, within there, by the time they came along in the Baptist de denomination, uh, women were being fought hard, real hard, and um, so they cut a pathway uh, for others to come behind them. But they were fought real hard, went through a lot, I know, uh, to, to stand. But here it is in the Word of God again. We've shown you how, how it is that um, women can be so very um, helpful. And so with all our getting, be, be, be teachable, stay teachable. That's what that's teaching us because we don't see Apollos kicking back. Apollos didn't say, y'all women, y'all can't tell me nothing. I've been saved all my life. I've been, <laughs> I've been saved for a hundred years. And I got wings on my back, but you just can't see it and a halo on my head. So y'all can't tell me nothing. Uh, Apollos received their teaching. After they pulled him to the side, there is no recording that he went off on them or anything. Now, I will say, you do want to check uh, behind anybody that teaches you something. That's teaching you. You want to be able to go back and research and make sure that what they're telling you is that. So you have to go behind me, if you will. Um, if something don't sound too right. I'm always here. Uh, you can message me. 
I'm always here to answer questions. Love questions. You can even answer me now. I ask questions now. Um, so let's move on real quickly here. So um, um, we need to be able to not only help I me mean, be trust trusting to improve our relationships, we have to be helpful to improve our relationship and then be good. Verse 14. Verse 14. I'm trying to see how much time we got. All right. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, it's, um, Pastor Felder. Let's see what I missed up there. Uh, you can put that back up. That's the one scripture we want to share. So oftentimes we cannot help people directly. If not, we should do whatever we can um, to enlist someone to to helpful, be helpful to them. So this is what Galatians 6 and 2. I am to bear the burdens of others and so fulfill the law of Christ. I am to bear the burdens of others. Now watch this. This does not say, and it refutes that saying that we have, that it's not scripture, that the Lord won't give you more than you can bear. That is not scripture. The Lord will give you more than you can bear. And when he does that, oftentimes it's to break us and mold us into what he will have us to be. But he is there to help bear that burden. And more so, he's told us to be there for each other, to help each other bear the burden. All right. Um, I, I'm grateful for those who uh, have been there for me to help me bear a uh, tremendous burden this year. It's been tremendous and um, nothing like it in my life. Uh, but I'm at a good place now. And it's all because of those who friends of mine and family that has come along to help bear the burden. Guess what? God did give me some stuff this year that broke me. So the burden was too heavy for me. Extremely. But it broke me and it remolded me. He remolded me while others were helping me carry that burden. So uh, let's not uh, just be making up stuff. The Lord won't give you more than you can bear. Thank the Lord for the women of God. Amen. Amen. And I do too. Amen. All right. So, uh, did I read? Now, so now let's go to verse 14. All right. So our people must learn to devote themselves to doing what is good in order to provide for urgent needs and not live unproductive lives. So be good. This is this is what we got to do. We got to be good. In verse 14, that's what it's telling us. Learn to devote ourselves to doing what is good. I mean, it should be simple. It's the opposite of doing bad. Do what is good and not what is bad. We not only have a conscience, but we also have more so the Holy Spirit that will lead and guide us. We know when we're doing something bad. We're going to be talking about anger again on Sunday. Uh, man, it's a rich study that I'm uh, just enlightening for me and I pray that it would be for you um, but we know when we're getting angry we know when we're getting bitterness so that's what we're going to be talking about the next couple of weeks uh, on Sunday all right there was a statement um Pastor Fairley if you put it back up I when I saw it flash up but I didn't the last one okay all right so um uh so be good now Listen close to this principle as well, because uh, you can apply it definitely not only in the church, but in the workplace or in your home. It is not possible for a manager uh, or a pastor, even the entire staff of a large church or a large company uh, to meet all the needs of everybody. Therefore, Paul writes um, Christians must learn to devote themselves to good works as it is to help cases of urgent need. That's the first part of verse 14. All right. So by helping Zenos and Apollos, Titus would be showing um, the Cretan believers, the island of Crete, those, those believers, those new believers on the island, he would be showing them 
a very good practical way what it means to be good. How he's helping them. How he's helping um, Apollos them and Zenos them come. So that's a good example. Um, and they see, they also see Paul sending people that he can trust. And so they see them coming and they, they have to say, well, Paul must trust them if they come in here uh, to, to teach us. All right. So doing good works is a requirement for some believers. Doing good works is a requirement for mm, a few. Doing good works require, is a requirement for uh, just the preacher <laughs> or just the, the women missionary. No, uh, doing good works, regardless of where you are and what you're doing, if you're an online church member or an in, in-building church member, uh, in-person church member, um, doing good works is required of all, of all believers, all right, all Christians. Uh, we're not off the hook. This is what we do. However, we have no responsibility to do good works for those who are lazy. Unless we're trying to find them a job or refuse to work. If they refuse to work. So the good work you can do for them is perhaps uh, find help them find a job. <laughs> um, now the proof text is there. The second, second um, uh, Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 10. Uh, is it not in there? All right. Uh, those who are not willing to work should not eat. That's what that's about. All right. Um, so we are to do good so we will not live unfruitful lives. And that's the second portion of verse 14. Um, what is good in order to provide for urgent needs and not live unproductive lives. So. Hopefully, you're doing more than just working, doing more than just going to class, doing more than just uh, laying around the house eating bun buns and stuff, cakes, and ice cream. Uh, but are you, what are you doing that's productive uh, for others? Okay, so to be trustworthy, there's five of them, and we are we're on the fourth one. Uh, to improve our relationship, be trusting, be helpful. Be good, and then uh, be courteous. We find that in verse fifteen. Verse fifteen says, "All who are with me send greetings to you. Greet those who love us in the faith. Greet those who love us in the faith." All right. So Paul continues, "All who are with me send greetings to you." That's the first portion of that. Then he says, Paul doesn't, Paul doesn't uh, specify who is with him, but he's probably including all the people that we've talked about. Paul then, he writes, greet those who love us in the faith. There's a, a special bond of Christian love among believers uh, who share the faith. <clears throat> now, we, we can, um, it could be diluted or not felt as much in the in in the United States because even though our faith is decreasing, declining, uh, Christian faith is declining. The Muslims are growing uh, much much faster, and other religions are growing much faster. Um, but when you're overseas, and I've, I've been overseas so many times, so many miles, but everywhere I go, it's always uh, great to see somebody. It's just exciting. Not saying that it's not exciting here in the United States, but um, uh, I think some 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 of the fervent feelings can be lost cause simply because we just like you get used to anything. So we used to being Christians and seeing Christians. You can ask just about anybody you walk up to uh, uh, what what faith are they are. They're going to say Christian more than likely here in America, even though they are not may not be a Christian. Uh, they'll check off in the block. They, they're Christian. Uh, when they ask what religion. Um, but in, overseas, it's just fascinating to see other people of a different culture, different, uh, uh, just different, to be able to serve the same 
God that you do. And so, you know, it's kind of exciting. And so this is what he speaks of. Um, that even here, though, in the United States, we got to be we should be excited uh, to see other believers and to know other believers. All right. Let's see. So we're going to move quickly. Uh, Romans with Romans 8 and 16 helps us with this. It says the Holy Spirit bears witness with my spirit, affirming those who are the children of God. So that affirmation by the Holy Spirit creates that excitement. So that's what um, that's this is what should happen based on the word of God. And I believe the word of God. So the Holy Spirit bears witness with my spirit, affirming those who are children of God. All right. So this last thing that we will cover on um, to uh, improve your relationships by being prayerful, prayerful. Uh, Titus three fifteen, the uh, last portion of that. Last portion. After greeting those who love us, this is a quick prayer by Paul in his letter. Grace be with you all. God's goodness be with you all. And so, um, Paul includes in this letter with the prayer, Grace be unto you um, all with you all. As mentioned in the earlier lesson, um, there are five kinds of grace in the New Testament. So when he says, Grace be with you all, uh, there's... He could be a little bit more specific, but we're thinking this is a working grace. There's such thing as a working grace since he's talking to them about doing a particular work. But let me share some of the other graces because I think it's powerful for us to know the five different graces that they are. And we can pray for this, this type of grace for other people, for your friends and for those who you're in relationship with. Uh, first one is Acts 4. Uh, 33, with great power, the apostles gave witness to the resurrection of the Lord and great grace was upon them. So this would be an empowering, empowering grace, uh, grace to be empowered. So it says with great power. So with great power, we are graced to be in power. So pray for uh, your friend or family member or even your enemy to be uh, empowered. Grace and power. And then uh, the second one out of the five is found in Romans 12, 6. Romans 12, 6 says we have different gifts according to the grace given to each of us. If your gift is prophesying, then prophesy according with your faith. Faith. So the grace given for each of us, of course, that's self-explanatory and what type of grace that is. I know y'all got it, right? It is uh, an equipping grace or a gifting grace. God's goodness gives us a gift. And so God's goodness, unmerited goodness, where we don't work for it, can't get it, by our earning. So he empowers us with grace. Uh, he gives us giftings or equip, equipping us with grace. And then 2 Corinthians chapter 2, 9 this is the grace that a lot of us probably want to have is sustaining grace. Sustaining grace. 2 Corinthians 2, 12, 9 says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient uh, for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly my weakness so that Christ's power may rest upon me. All right, so that is a uh, sustaining grace. And then... Um, saving grace. For it is by grace you have been saved through faith. This is not from yourselves. It is the gift of God by, uh, not by works so that no one can boast. So, um, it's a saving grace. There's saving grace. And then finally, uh, you have the gracious attractive so that you will have the right response for everyone. Uh, let let your conversation be graceful. So that's a uh, refining grace from Colossians 4, 6. All right. So again, with this verse 15, I was probably talking about an empowering grace to do the work. Uh, verse 10, 1 Corinthians 
15 verse 10 says, uh, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. All right. So we need empowering grace. And that will. So the last thing, if we just pray um, for others that we're in relationship with. And um, if you desire, we're going to do that. We're going to be apply this now. Uh, we're going to apply this part of the teaching now by, you know, maybe putting their names in the comment section. And uh, I'm going to pray. I'm going to practice this portion. I'm going to apply this portion by praying for you tonight. And, um, and you praying with me for your friend um, or family member. So if you want to put their names in the comment section, we'll carve their names out as we uh, are praying. Okay. So while you're doing that, <clears throat> I just want to um, conclude by saying we need empowering grace for our daily um, needs in life and if we are to uh, experience good life we should regularly pray for God's grace to be with uh, our brothers and sisters in the faith um, especially for those who are ministering in difficult situations or going through difficult situations um, when we say it's doing good works in difficult situations uh, such as um, Apollos and uh the ones that he called, that Paul called down there to work for him. All right. So in First Thessalonians five seventeen, uh, we should obey this command. Pray without ceasing. All right. So to improve um, our relationships as we go into prayer, uh, remember: uh, be trusting, be helpful, be good, be courteous, and then last, be uh, prayerful. And so we're going to do that last one now. Uh, as we go and pray for those who are uh, friends. God, we thank you now for this uh, this night of studying your word. We pray for those who being obedient to you, uh, obedient to your word uh, that gives us instructions based on uh, this book of Titus, that we should at least pray for uh, our relationships. So now, God, those who would be putting up in their names, um, Pam, Dickerson's son, Cam, uh, we pray for him uh, in the military serving, and we pray for uh, her daughters, Aston and Jordan, and uh, her husband, Alan. So we pray that you give them all the grace that they need uh, to continue forth in, in Jesus' name. And we pray for Betty James, uh, who lost her daughter. So we pray uh, for Betty that you be with her on tonight. All right. Also, we want to pray uh, for Vanessa Hill, my uh, niece, who lost her mother uh, on yesterday. So we're going to lift her up and her brother. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Okay, so we're going to get out of here on that. Um, uh, I'm going to be coming back Sunday. Again, we'll be back next Wednesday to wrap up this total, um, this total book. And... Uh, and I want to wish my co-veterans a happy Veterans Day on uh, Friday. <clears throat> Y'all go do something. Uh, somebody going to be serving a meal. You deserve it. And, uh, and those of you that are not veterans, tell the veteran thank you for their service. I know that sounds kind of uh, cliche uh, at this point because <laughs> you hear it so much. Uh, but it still means a lot. Say something. Or give something. That would mean something. All right. All right. And uh, thank you. Thank you. That's a good idea. Praying for somebody. Praying for me and, and DCC. We need it. We need it. Thank you. I just think that may be Amanda. So, um, all right. And with that said, again, Sunday, worship at 11, 11 a.m. Um, we're going to uh, continue in our seventh. Six, six part of how to keep um, good vibes or developing good vibes. Man, y'all, I learned so much in the last two weeks and the next two weeks uh, about this right here. Man, uh, I appreciate you. Thank you, uh, Pastor Borkins. Thank you. The devil came knocking. We're talking about um, the vibes of emotions, of anger, and uh, bitterness on the following week. 
And man, Lord has shown me some stuff. I'm just excited to show you. All right. I think that is it. We ask again that you would be so kind to help uh, help this ministry like Paul uh, help the ministry and Titus help this ministry uh, by giving. Uh, you can be a part of that. God will bless that and honor your obedience into um, helping us. And so you can do that by dollar sign my destiny CC. And we need all the help that we can get to continue to uh, do what we do all around the world. And God will give you uh, credit and bless you when you get to heaven. That's so credit their crown was laid up for us uh, in heaven. So um, if you'll be so kind to to do that, you can go ahead and do that, uh, Pastor Felder. I don't know. Whatever that was. I think it was the gift, right? Okay. So I hopefully you can still hear me. And um, there's five ways to give. And with the exception of that Sharal. <laughs> it's Charlotte. But we'll get get this straight. All right, you guys have a good rest of the day. This is another part of um, before we leave. Um, well, okay. Thank you. Thank you. I think it's something, it's something I'm remembering that I can't remember. But anyway, we'll see you Sunday and uh, have a blessed, blessed uh, weekend. There are things that, that should make us angry sometimes. Sin and anger are not necessarily the same thing. It's not always a sin to be angry. In fact, if it is always a sin to be angry, then Jesus would have sin. Jesus was angry on several occasions. God is a God of love, but he also is a God of anger. Things that angers God should anger us.